We're going to take a look at some CDs, some records today, all about the metals. Uh, while you're here, like, subscribe, and please leave some comments. I enjoy having conversations with people about this stuff. Let's get on with it. Good afternoon, Simon here, Explosive Action. I am back with a metal update. Big pile of records here and a few CDs. In the background, we are listening to Judas Iscariot, Heaven in Flames. I have felt like putting on some ancient old black metal today, um, inspired a bit by what's in some of this update here. Um, yeah, I got this tape, I don't know, about a year ago or so. Purportedly, it's uh, the original. Um, it's got original slick from At War Records. Um, yeah, it's an old release. The tape itself is like a hand-dubbed thing, but apparently that's, you know, what was released. So anyway, sounds good, and, uh, you know, if you're going to listen to Heaven in Flames, you should probably listen to it on a crappy old tape. All right, first off, we'll get through the CDs. We'll get this one out of the way, because everyone else is talking about it. Uh, the new Cannibal Corpse, a violence uh, unimagined. I was going to say imagined, but it's unimagined, because you can't imagine this violence. Um, this is really good. Uh, I've given it a couple spins through, so far about three spins. Um, and look, I think it's a noticeable step up from um, the previous couple of albums. I've never been like not a fan of Cannibal Corpse. I know some people like dropped off when Barnes left. Actually, I kind of jumped on in a way. I always had um, Eaten Back to Life, and that's still my number one favorite. But the the albums after that, I don't revere as much as many other people. When Vile came out, and then Gallery of Suicide with Corpse Grinder, they're, they're my Cannibal Corpse albums, along with uh, the debut. But this one, um, so in this one we've got Eric Rutan from uh, Hate Eternal, uh, who's jumped on to do uh, lead guitar. Makes a bit of a difference. Um, I think the overall sound of this, I mean the production is, they've had the same sound for ages, but it's a real tight, real, um, uh, I guess the guitars have more of a chug in it this time than uh, being overly technical, which is really, really helps the band. Um, I think, what was it? Uh, yeah, Condemnation Contagion, I think, had an amazingly chuggy riff on it that I thought was really, really, really good fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's, look, if you've turned off Cannibal Corpse since Vile, probably don't jump on here, but if, if it was the last few albums, you're like, oh, this is getting samey then I think give this one a try because um, it might surprise you. So yeah, new Cannibal Corpse, it's solid. It's, it's yep, yeah, it's Cannibal Corpse, man, they're good. Next one I'm gonna take a look at is the debut album from Thos Ayla, I think it's probably the best way to pronounce this, uh, which is a, a new uh, one-man band side project from Father Befouled. Uh, this is from Derek, uh, guitarist of Father Befouled. Um, and yeah, what you get here is sort of a well, first of all, the production is, is hugely muddy, which I think does actually work in its favour, but it's somewhere between dissection uh, in the melodic Black Death sense, um, but then with that muddy production, it makes you not think of dissection. Then it's got some of the early Greek scene in it, uh, some early Rotting Christ, um, you can hear that in here. Um, and then there's parts where it just gets kind of a blackened heavy metal in an uh, Gosselin style. I reckon it's a mix of all those bands, and you sort of get Thos Ayla. I love this cover art. Um, yeah, the uh, title's called Abnegation Psalms, uh, and this is a um, limited to 100 release on Sunshine Sunshine Ward. Unfortunately, uh, it is a CDR, which I didn't know at the time, but look, it's limited to 100. I think this is basically to get it out there and then get interest for a, a bigger label. And hopefully that's what happens. Now, uh, at this stage, you can still get copies from uh, Sunshine Ward's website. There's none on the band camp, uh, so go to the Sunshine Ward website. And I recommend it. I mean, support it. It's it's really good. Um, you know, oh, oh, hang around for a bit longer, and then maybe there'll be a, another release on um, a different label. But uh, I really enjoy it. Really good stuff from Thos Ayla, Abnegation at Psalms. Looking forward to seeing what happens next with them. And yeah, one-man band. It's... Um, you know, quality instruments all the way through. It's really good. I went back in time. I got another Demon Ball gear, Devil's Path. I had this in the way back, and I got rid of it when I did a big purge. Really wanted to get this one back. Um, and, yeah, I I really always liked this EP. It's only got, like, three tracks and then a, a useless remix. Um, 
Where the hell was the track list? Anyway, you get um, Devil's Path is the main track on this, which is really, really good. And you get, surely it's written here somewhere. Um, yeah, there you go. So you get uh, Master of Disharmony, which later showed up on Enthroned Darkness Triumphant, but it's a different recording here. It's way more raw. Uh, and then Nocturnal Fear, and it has two versions of it. The second one is, is Celtically Processed. I don't actually know what the difference is with it. Obviously, it's a, um, it's a, uh, a Celtic Frost cover. But honestly, I heard it. I didn't hear much difference with those songs. Kind of like, you know, when you get the original Altars of Madness release and it has remix tracks on the end and you like they sound exactly the same um, anyway Devil's Path good EP um, came out on Hot Records in I think it was like 95 interesting inside it talks about how they were just signed to Nuclear Blast and they've got a four album deal and watch out for Enthroned Darkness Triumph and it's coming soon and yeah we all know how how that has ended for the band there you know the biggest name in black metal really um, with a bit of a change in style but this EP is a good Good solid uh, follow-up from Stormblast and just before Enthroned Darkness. If, if Enthroned Darkness is where you turn off, then I'd still include this in your discography because the the production and, and the, just the the general rawness to the sound is is um, really appealing. Good stuff, Devil's Path. And the last CD, more black metal. This is a Black Funeral Vampire Throne of the Beast, um, 1995 US black metal. This one and look, Black Funeral is one of those bands I never really listened to or got into and um, uh, this happened upon me uh, on Facebook sales and it's original Full Moon Press I figured look why not give it a go debut album um, apparently it was limited to a thousand when it came out um, I assume it's been reissued like 50 times by now but yeah the original Full Moon Press very nice um, I think it's really good it's uh, that you know um, it sounds a bit like mutilation from the same era, not as raw, um, not as insane in the vocal department, but it's got that sort of mid-paced, um, teetering into faster at, at times, um, under-processed under black metal. Um, I also get a little bit of that Greek sound in there, which you know I, I found with a lot of the early bands, that seems to be the thing. Um, there's sort of Emperor Demos sound going on here. I think it's really good. Um, they're, I think they're still a thing, Black Funeral. I think they're still a thing, but um, this is the only one I'm familiar with, their very first album. Uh, Grim Medieval Vampiric Black Metal. I'll take that. That's a good description. And it is, definitely is uh, vampiric, just like you know, Mutilation on their first album in the same year. So, If you've never heard Black Funeral, I'd say definitely check it out if you're a fan of uh, the 90s scene. Good stuff. Onto the records now. First one I'm going to take a look at the only thrash album in this pile. Harlot, uh, Detritus of the Final Age. These guys are Australian. Uh, Melbourne thrash band. Um, and man, if you like Modern Testament, Modern Creator, this is what you this is what you came for. Uh, Harlot, man. They know what they're doing. Tight, tight stuff. Definitely um, you know, on the, the world stage band, which is proven by them being on Metal Blade. Um, I'm very, very picky when it comes to Modern Thrash. Like, super, super picky. And um, for me to to get into a band that is, you know, like I said, 50% Testament, 50% Creator, and actually endorse it. That's that's a pretty big thing for me. Um, and I, yeah, I absolutely love these guys. I hope they come up to Sydney at some point, do a tour. Um, it's uh, yeah, just a black LP, nothing to show in there. It comes in the metal blade sleeve, um, and we get uh, sort of a lyric sheet deal. Um, what else is in here? There's a poster, I'm not going to fold that out, and there is a little pamphlet thing. So yeah, Harlot, the treatise of the final age. Um, look, there's not much more to say besides what I said. It's just tight modern thrash, and it's really, really good. So yeah, check them out if you are a fan of either of those bands or just a fan of thrash in general. You're going to like it, Harlot. Next one. Uh, this is this is super good. This is the first album from this band. Um, they're uh, half made up of members from Ruin and Ascended Dead and it's I don't want to say if you like those two bands you're gonna like this I don't think that's actually a good comparison uh, this is Vrent's Baptism of Death Baptism of Death what a great title um, an awesome artwork on this too this is um, like I said it's a mix of those two bands in terms of members but 
the sound here is just straightforward, no frills, thick, super well produced, but not clicky drums produced. You know, it's just quality sound. Uh, death metal. It's just death metal. Um, rolling double kicks, thick, chunky guitars. Uh, vocals are really good, really nice tone to them. Um, man, this is just death metal. I don't know. You can't really say much else about it. It's. Um, I guess it's, it's leaning on that sort of darker sound, um, you know, the immolation style of death metal, um, but it's not as fast or anything like that. It's, it's more of a mid-paced band. Um, occasionally it's kind of blackened. Um, the, the track Paroxysm Darkness is, is nearly death and roll. Um, so it's kind of all over the shop in terms of the actual um, music on here, but I think this is really good. I only had a couple of uh, listens through so far. Um, and you get... Uh, just a black LP, nothing too exciting. Uh, lyric sheet with the fan on the back there. So yeah, um, really solid release. And look, to, to get here after one demo, a three-track demo, and then bam, it's a full length uh, on Rotted Life. So there you go, that's pretty good. Brents with uh, Baptism of Death, recommended. Next up, we got the new one from Imha Tarakat, German black metal. Uh, Imha Tarakat's actually Turkish for uh, Extermination Sect, uh, which is really cool, but um, this is called uh, Sternenburster. I'm sure I'm getting all these names kind of pronounced wrong anyway. Uh, their follow-up album, um, they did one in 2019, um, the name escapes me at the moment, but that was one of my favourite albums of that year. This is technically a 2020 album, but the LP didn't get released until January, and it's been on the slow boat from Germany until last week. It only just showed up. Man, German Post at the moment, it's just its just shocking. If you can't get DHL, then it's going by the slow boat. Literally, it's going by boat. Anyway, um, so these guys, um, kind of unique sound, I find. its its I think of them in, in my head as like black metal bolzer. Uh, the vocals sort of help me make that description. Um, pretty fast, usually. Um, overly, it's melodic and it is aggressive, but... Um, it's not, I wouldn't call it melodic black metal, like it's not twiddly. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just pretty ferocious black metal that happens to be melodic and yeah, the, the vocals definitely remind me of something like Bolzer. It's, it's not raspy black metal vocals, it's more um, boomy and um, pretty unique stuff. So I really, I really dig these guys. This album's just as good as the previous one. Um, really, really cool song titles they're written, scripted like that. Um, I don't think many people know them. Nobody ever seems to talk about these guys, Imha Tarakat, but uh, they really should. Uh, black LP, I think it was. Yeah, just a black LP, 180 gram thing. A black metal supernova. That's what the hype sticker says. Does anybody else do there with the hypes? Uh, I put them on the inner sleeve. Seems to be a good place to put them. Um, lyric sheet, and I think that's about it. But yeah, this is uh, this is strong. Just as strong as the previous album, and uh, I definitely encourage more people to check them out in Hard Tarakat. You like German black metal, and you like a bit of uh, a bit of Bolza mixed in, then I think you're going to like this stuff. Awesome. Next one, we got an Australian band. Uh, this is the first and brand new release from Pestis Cultus. These guys are from Perth. Um, they're not new to the scene. They were they were previously known as Snorri S N O R R I, who I'd never actually heard of, but. Um, this is, uh, this is a necro black metal, that's what this is, and I don't hear stuff these days too much that I would describe as necro. Um, you know, it's usually raw black metal or whatever, but um, nah, this has got that first EP, Carpathian Forest, and then a bit more speed. That's what this is. Um, this is top quality. Is it actually self-titled? Yeah, it's self-titled. Pestis Cultus, and it's out on the Signal Rex. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of copies of this thing around. Very, very evil, satanic necro black metal straight ahead very good stuff um and it's also from the main guy behind uh Drotnung. i think that's how you say it, Drotnung. and uh, yeah there's my hand signed thingy that uh was sent to me which is very nice uh thanking me for the support and yeah just a black lp on signal rex but if you're if you've been missing just sort of straight ahead dirty black metal that you don't say is, um, I'm not going to re-sleeve that, you don't say, oh, this is raw black metal, but you like that necro sound that was so prevalent in, um, you know, the late 90s, um, and then, you know, even some of those bands in the early 2000s, 
check it out, Pestis Cultus. I think it's really strong stuff. Um, looking forward to seeing what else they come up with. The next one I'm going to check out is the split between Daiichi and Lamp of Murmur. Um, Lamp of Murmur, everybody knows at this point, they're the uh, sort of the, the big name in uh, underground raw black metal at this point. Um, but Daiichi is a new entity. Uh, pretty sure they're from Japan. Nothing is given up much on the Metal Archives about where they're from, but the members' names are Japanese, and uh, it's sort of japanese theme, so it's called Daiichi. Anyway, um, yeah, you get uh, three tracks from Daiichi and two from Lamp. Um, the Daiichi stuff is very strong. I'm very impressed with it. It's, um, I mean, both are raw black metal, but this is, the Daiichi's kind of, um, I don't know, it doesn't, I can't really work out what it reminds me of, except sort of the vocals have this half-processed, almost red harvest sound going on, um, which is probably just what I'm hearing, but anyway. Um, it's, yeah, it's just fantastic. Uh, very, um, the, the melody is buried in there, in with the, the noise, like the Daiichi side's got almost a black noise thing going on there. Um, but yeah, strong stuff. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing where that, where these guys go. I think it's a two-piece, so uh, we'll see where Daiichi goes from here, but great start. And uh, Lamp, um, two tracks on here. The first one's quite epic. It's like six, seven minutes long or something. Um, and it's just continuing on from the, the album uh, that they did uh, last year. Well, yeah, he did last year. We're pretty sure it's a single-person band. They don't give up much about themselves either. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely in that newer, sort of more refined sound that he's been going for. Like, the early material was raw black metal, and then the album really found his own sound, and I think the tracks on here continue on from that. So, yeah, exciting release. Very happy with it. Um, not sure about qual uh, quantities out there anymore. Just black LP. Probably sold out. Um, this was through Nebula, um, Nebula Carcoma, um, who are a great label, um, and I've, I've learnt through them, I've, I've just placed my second order with them, um, they're, I'm not sure where they're based actually, not too sure where they're based, somewhere in Europe, but um, the shipping costs, for the, they've got a distro as well, the shipping costs are quite good, and you get to a certain point, and it just caps out at about 25 euro, and you can go uh, DHL and get it in like five days. So, tick to that box. I've got some more cool stuff coming from Nebula Carcoma. Or is it Carsoma? I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. Daiichi Lamp of Murmur, another good release from Lamp, and very good stuff from Daiichi. Uh, the next one, I've got to thank my mate uh, Ben Brain Smasher. He showed this one on a video some time ago, and I started looking to the band. I'd never heard of them. This is Pocalus from 1995, self titled album. Lithuanian pagan black metal. Um, yeah, as I said, I've never heard of them. The sound to me is sort of like, you know, your first album, Nocturnal Mortem, that kind of thing. You know, atmospheric pagan. There's strong keyboards in it. Um, the drums are odd sounding. It took me a couple of listens to appreciate them. They're, they're almost like tin can. No, 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 I'll take that back. They're not Saint Anger tin cans, but they're like the snare is very light on. It almost sounds like a a sample of a snare that is not the world's best sample. I don't know. It doesn't detract. It's just took a took a few listens. Um, this is super super good. I can sort of see how it was lost. Like it was a one and done band from 1995. There's some splits and things, but no other album. Um, yeah, double LP, and it's this really nice uh, sort of bronze smoke color. Um, very pretty. Both of them are the same. I won't take the other one out. And uh, is there a booklet or something? No, there's a um, uh, upsell for a shirt and uh, other albums from the label. Is that it? I think that's it. Um, nothing in this side. Nope. So, yeah, Pocalus. Uh, if you've never heard of them, oh my god, I can't even get it out back in. Reese Levy on camera. If you've never heard Pocalus and you like at least the sound of the early Nocturnal Mortem, um, and that, uh, you know, there's a few bands from Lithuania. If you like that um, mid-90s um, sort of East Europe sound, I think you're going to like Pocalus. Very strong, very good. Next up we have Conjurus. This is awesome. I've been waiting for this to arrive for just as long as the Imhart Tarakat. It's been sitting in the slow boat from uh, Germany. Uh, this is their um, reissue of their two demos, Foul Formations and the Levi Levitation Manifest. I should actually get that right but anyway 
Um, this is the second one, I believe this is the first one. Um, so they released the, the demos, I think it was 2019 and then 2020, I think, if memory serves me right, uh, online on Bandcamp and um, there was a CDR demo you could buy. Um, and I think a Malaysian company may have done some cassettes, but anyway, I was waiting for something like this and bam, um, fucking Kill Records, what a great name, FKR. They are renowned of late for doing these split demo things. They're usually like um, uh, two different bands and they just split them over one LP, which is a great way to do uh, two demos. But in this case, Conjure have had two demos. So there you go. I got number uh, 14 out of 220. And um, I'm actually, yeah, I'm stoked with this release. It's so good. Uh, so Conjure is um, ex Gotha guys um, and it's featuring. Um, uh, Wayne on uh, vocals and uh, guitars. He's in, or has been in, like a thousand and one bands. Going back to Eternal Suffering, Brutal Death Band, um, Incoffination, uh, Void Ceremony, things like that. Um, that's the, 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 the heritage in Conjureth is these aren't new guys. They've done so much stuff. They're very well seasoned. The whole thing sounds like well seasoned death, me death metal as well. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, what do we get? Uh, we get the uh, release sheet of stuff from FKR, which is cool, and we get the uh, lyric sheet. I'm not sure why it's got that empty black box down there. It feels like they forgot to put something there, but anyway. Um, very cool. And <laughs> it's on a nice, disgustingly pink bubble gum to match the logo, which is uh, kind of fun. So anyway, um, unfortunately, I believe this has sold out, and um, I think they've also had enough of reissuing the demo um, they've been picked up by memento mori to do an album so that's what you're going to pay attention to now going forward but if you just want to hear this stuff um go check it out on bandcamp and um look what's what i think is actually quite nice of what they've done because it's a cdr right and yeah you can make your own cdrs but if you buy the bandcamp download the they've got the front cover they've got the rear cover they've got all the stuff you just print it at home and it's all high resolution so Make your own demos, that's what I say um, with Conjurus. Go buy the Bandcamp and just print it all out at home. Very cool, awesome stuff, and I'm looking forward uh, to the full length on Memento Mori. Uh, the next one is a reissue of sorts. Um, well, definitely it is a reissue. Um, what am I saying? But anyway. Uh, Emperor, Anthems to the Welcome at Dusk. Man, my youth, my, my teenage years was spent just... I, I have, must have played this album at least 500 times without exaggeration. I was just, this is what I was playing. Um, nobody needs to know my thoughts on this album. It's magnificent. It is the peak. This is the new reissue, uh, the, um, they call it Half Speed Master. Um, so what I understand from this process is they, um, they cut the grooves at half speed while playing the music at half speed. Then it's all, you play it back and it's, it plays it back at normal speed and apparently this improves the audio repli uh, replication, the reproduction. I can't say if it does or doesn't, but what I can tell you is that this sounds fantastic. A very warm sound, very happy with this. Um, as well too, the um, you know the artwork is uh, looks strong, like it's, it's a little, I mean it's the first time I've ever had it on LP, it's a little bit fuzzy there, but it's never been known for clarity on the CD, they've redone the font and everything though. This is all clean and clear and crisp. All the band photos look great. Inner sleeve. Uh, there you go. It's just nice. And look, this is my this is one of my pet peeves, right? They go to all this effort of making a fantastic reissue and it didn't come like it was just the LP was in a piece of cardboard. So of course it gets micro abrasions on the wax and scuffs the first time you take that. Why do they do this? It costs three cents or something for them to put it in one of these elephant condoms. So just do it, please. You're just pissing off the collectors. But anyway, um, yeah, just a black LP, nothing too exciting. Um, I was on the fence of picking it up on or not. People were saying, oh, it sounds... One person said it sounded like um, uh, it was you know, soaring wood against the grain, which I thought was interesting. Um, to my ears, on my system, this sounds fantastic. I think it sounds very warm, very open. Um, and I had ordered it on Amazon and then they cancelled it and oh, oh we're sorry sir we can't get copies of it blah blah so I just forgot about it walked into Utopia Records they just got fresh stock in it was good price it was like 40 bucks so yep picked it up um, and yes 40 bucks Australian for an LP in a shop is a good price before you know I know some people are paying 
fourteen dollars for an LP, and they think that's good. But you know, welcome to Australia, the land that is girt by sea. We import everything. Uh, yeah, great stuff. Emperor, everybody knows anthems, and I endorse this remaster or reissue. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about here, I don't know a great deal about these guys. Um, this is Moon Citadel with Knight's Scarlet Symphonies. Finnish black metal, and it sounds so completely Finnish. Um, man, so good. It is It is um, everything you like from that sound, you know, that var grab sound that, the, um, that those guys do, um, if you think of a modern band. Um, and, you know, that you know, Horner sound as well. I think it's just encapsulated so well on this. Um, ferocious, melodic, but um, yeah, there you go. There's the two guys in the band. I don't know anything really about them, um, but I liked this album. I, I gave it a little a spin. I'll give you the full story. So, to buy the next album, which I'll show, obviously, um, it cost me zero dollars more in postage to get two instead of one. And in fact, the label was saying, "Don't buy one thing. Get two. Don't be silly. Save yourself postage." So I did, and this. Clicking through, this one took my, uh, well first took my eye because I think the cover's fantastic. Um, and listening to it very quickly I thought, yep, this one will do, chuck that in the car for, you know, whatever it was, 12 euro and then no extra postage, it was just a no-brainer. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it, uh, I've listened to it twice through so far, um, and it's just, yeah, quality finish black metal, good stuff. Knight's Scarlet Symphonies from Moon Citadel. And the album that I intended to buy, and wow, this was um, one of those things the band said was never going to happen because they remastered it and only the remaster exists now. Actually, not even remastered, re-recorded it. Uh, and only that is what they consider the, the album now. But they uh, relented and let a small label do a one-time only ever pressing. That is Abigail with Channeling the Quintessence of Satan. Uh, this came out, I think it was like uh, 98, 97, 98, maybe 96, I don't know, it's around then. Um, so you've had your, you've had your, um, your, uh, you know, untouchable series from Verwesting up to uh, Suprema Model Art, um, and then uh, they, I don't know if they took a break or just, I don't know, nothing happened for a, a couple of years. Then we get uh, Channeling, and I bought it on time at, on CD, and I thought it was really good, but it has a very flat sound to it, and I think that's the problem the band has had with uh, the production of it. Um, so they re-recorded it and just called it Quintessence, and that's good. Um, but going back and listening to this again, after listening to the, the re-recording for um, the last few years, I think I prefer this. This is actually not that far removed from um, where they were going from um, Supreme, Supreme Immortal Art, but it's got the, like, Orklet and um, Opus 4 sound to it so it completely fits in with the um you know the classic albums i, I consider this no less classic than the others uh and the song is fantastic um dawn of human dust the opening track is a belter so this is uh yeah limited to three seven three hundred and seventy five copies i got number 48 unfortunately no you can't get them um i've seen it somebody on the sold theirs on ebay for 650 euro and it does look like they somebody paid for it so i mean what can i say it, and again this just came in a paper sleeve to frustrate me, but um, I put it in a, a plastic one, just a nice black vinyl. And what's odd, at least in my copy, is this inner sleeve thing. Now, I'm not too sure what the purpose of this was, but um, it's not for Abigail. It's for a band called Miasma, um, and it's got this text across through it. I think they're trying to say, this is not part of the release, but you know, like, I've got this full booklet in here uh, from Rotten Relics about Miasma. I don't know. I think they just used it to protect the uh, the LP, but that was a strange inclusion. So yeah, you get the, the card and the LP. Nice, simple release. And um, yeah, I very much enjoyed revisiting Quintessence in its original sound, so recommended. And the last one, the one that's been stuck in the German post system for the longest time, I was getting a bit worried about it showing up and then it finally did yesterday, only yesterday. And um, which means I've only had one listen through to it so far. I've been holding off, trying not to listen to it digitally. I did listen, listen, listen to it once digitally. I really wanted to savor it for when it showed up. It's the new one from Abigail, uh, Totschlager, I think is how you say it, a Saint Slayer's songbook. Uh, this one came out on um, WTC um, technically last year, 
But look, again, the LPs didn't ship until late January and it's April and they're showing up in people's hands. So I'm calling it a 2021 release, basically. Um, from the quick listen I've had so far, it's just as good as the previous album. The band have moved away, um, I'd say about 60% away from that sort of... They were never quite industrial black metal, but they had this electronic uh, experimental edge going on with some of their, um, the later 2000s albums. Um, not so much here. This is, this is I'm not going to say they're going back to their roots, but it's just more straightforward. Um, and I don't think it's really, really strong. Um, I mean, I like all Abigail, um, you know, even uh, Satanized, which people don't seem to like too much. I enjoy that album. Um, so what we get here, uh, a very nice booklet, which is very cool. It almost looks like it's hand calligraphy, but, you know, drawings and uh, the lyrics, sort of a gold uh, print, which is very, very nice. And this is the only colour besides black that I would accept Avagor on. Uh, in fact, this is the only pressing of the LP and it's still in press, you can still get it. Plenty of copies to go around for everyone. Look at that blood red, translucent. It's got a smoky thing going on as well. Fantastic. Um, and unfortunately, you could probably see it. It did get a little bit on the warped side. The real problem of being in the post for so long from Germany on a boat. Three months of getting cooked in a boat. But anyway, it plays fine. I'll go get it flattened at some point. It's not to that point where it won't play. It tracks perfectly fine. Um, the perils of getting LPs during COVID, right? Yeah, this is a strong album. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more listens to see if I like it more than the previous album. The previous album was excellent. Um, like I said, I pretty much like all Abigail, but um, we'll see if this one is an improvement. And uh, yeah, awesome, very happy with that. And that's my uh, metal update for April. Um, like I said at the start, if you liked the video, please thumbs up, subscribe, all that nonsense. Importantly though, leave some comments. I want to hear your thoughts. What have you been buying? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.